All right, what's up? Let's take a look at one-sided limits. Uh, this time in this video, we're going to look at trig functions and we'll look at a natural log function. I have another video on polynomials, rational uh, functions, that kind of stuff. So you can check that one out if you want to also. And, and there's a piecewise function in the other video too. But first, let's just, um, well, in this one, let's look at trig functions and a natural log. So the first thing I want to do before we get started is just the notation. Of course, you know, this is the limit as x approaches a, and the little minus sign here means that we're approaching a from the left. And this one, the limit of f of x as x approaches a, and this little plus sign here means that we're approaching from the right. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our functions here, or our, I mean our problems. So the the first one we're going to look at is the limit of cotangent x as x goes to infinity, I mean as x approaches pi from the left-hand side. All right, so we're dealing with cotangent. All right, so... I mean, we know how to graph cotangent, okay? We, we know how to graph that. Uh, and, and, it's, and it's pretty easy to see. You know, if we've got zero and then we've got pi here, and so that would be what, pi over two, and then we've got what, three pi over two, and then we've got pi over four, there's one, there's negative one, and you know with cotangent we've got asymptotes at, at zero and pi, and we're here, here, and here, and so cotangent would look something like this, and we can see as we're coming in to pi from the left hand side, see we're coming in from this side, what is the graph doing as we're getting closer and closer to pi from the left? Well, it's going to negative infinity. So we could see that answer is negative infinity. All right. And, and you know, that's great if you, if you do that. And that's, it's acceptable to do that. You can just, you can sketch the graph. But what I want to do is I want to, let's look at it with a, a graph, but let's look at it just a little bit different, okay? But like I said, that way there, if you understand that, I mean, that's fine. If you can sketch cotangent real quick, then do it that way. But let's, let's look at this. We know that this is the limit as x goes to pi from the left, okay? And remember, cotangent is what? Cosine over sine. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to graph, I want to graph sine and cosine on the same coordinates uh, axis. So we're just going to make a rough sketch, and and you should know how to graph this. Oop. And so that's going to be 1, negative 1. All right, so first, let's graph, let's graph the sine function. So the sine starts at 0, maximum, 0, then it goes to its minimum, and then back to 0. Okay, so here's the sine function. And we don't really need the whole thing because we're just right here around pi. Now, let's graph the cosine function. So if I graph the cosine function, well it starts at a maximum, zero, then it goes to its minimum, zero, and then back to its maximum. And so here's the cosine function. Okay? And what we're doing is we're looking, we're looking right here 
as we're approaching pi from the left hand side. We're coming into to pi from the left hand side. All right, so let's look at this. So we've got cosine over sine. Well, as we're getting closer and closer to pi, over, to pi from the left hand side, well, what's happening? Well, cosine, you can see, is going to be right here around negative 1. You see that? And it's going to be right around negative 1. Let's write that there. And then, what is the negative 1 going to be over? Okay, it's not going to be exactly negative 1, but it's going to be pretty close. Okay, so what happens as we're coming in to the left-hand side? Okay, what is sine doing? Well, as I'm coming in to pi from the left-hand side, you can see the y values of sine. They're going to be numbers like 0 0.01. See, we're get, see, the y values are getting smaller and smaller the closer we're getting to pi from the left hand side. And you got, and it's, it's just, they're just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay. They're getting closer and closer to zero. Now, if I have negative one, say, over 0 0.01, or negative one over 0 0.001, or negative one over point, and let's just put a bunch of zeros here. Okay, so what's happening? Well, the numerator is pretty much staying at negative 1 down here. Well, what's the denominator doing? It's getting really, really small. Okay, so the smaller that the denominator gets, well, what's happening to that entire fraction? Well, if the numerator is staying at around negative 1 pretty much, but the denominator is getting really, really small, then that means the entire fraction, well, is getting real small or real big with a negative number in front of it, right? So we would say this is going to negative infinity. And I know this was more involved. It was a lot easier just to sketch out cotangent. But I think it's good that you understand it like this also, okay? So let's look at the next problem. All right, so the next problem, we've got the limit of x times cosecant x as x approaches 2 pi from the left. All right, so, well, for this one, this is equal to the limit as x goes to 2 pi from the left. Now, well, look at this one, x times cosecant x. Well, we, we would have to think about the, the what the graph looks like of cosecant. Well, we can picture it, but I think it would be easier if we rewrote this problem as x over sine x, because if you remember from trig, cosecant x is equal to 1 over sine x. Okay? All right, so let's look at this. So first, let's go ahead and make a sketch of sine x. Okay, so I think this right here, it's easier to do like we did in that previous one. Uh, let's see, pi, 3 pi over 2, and we got pi over 2. We got 1, negative 1, and so... Let's see, sine is going to look something like this. Okay, and it's going through the graph there. But all we're concerned about is right here at 2 pi. We're, we're coming in to the left-hand side. Okay. All right, so we're coming in to 2 pi from the left. All right. So... If we look at this, well, as we're coming in to 2 pi, the x value, notice this numerator, okay? We're plugging in values that's close to 2 pi coming in from the left, so they're going to be a little bit less than 2 pi, but we can pretty much say it's 2 pi, 
Okay, so hopefully you understand that the uh, the numerator is pretty much going to be two pi. Well, what's the denominator going to be? Sine x. What's the value of sine x as we're getting closer and closer to two pi? Okay, from the left. Well, you can see that we're getting closer and closer to zero. See we. See right here, we're at what, about negative 0.5, and then as we move up, you're looking at negative 0.2, negative 0.1, right? Negative 0.1, negative 0.01, as we get, as we get closer and closer, the y values are getting closer and closer to zero, negative 0.0001, okay? So the closer we get, I mean, that denominator is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? And then it's the same argument that we did when we looked at this problem, number one, cotangent. Well, that means this whole fraction here is getting really big with a negative sign in front. So that means we can say that fraction is going to negative infinity. And there's your answer. All right, so let's take a look at the next problem. All right, so now the last problem, we've got the limit of natural log x squared minus four as x approaches two from the right. All right, so first you can see that if we plug the two in, we're gonna get four minus four is zero. You can't take the log of zero or a negative number. So remember that. All right, so let's just kind of look at this. What would happen if I kind of made a, a rough sketch of this? I wonder what that would look like. All right, so if we look at this, let's see, there's one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. Now, we know that the basic shape, if we just took the log of x, that that graph is going to look something like that, okay? It's going like this, okay? So, because remember, you can't take the log of a negative number. So, we, we're not going to be able to cross the y-axis here. So, looking at this one, Hopefully you can see that we couldn't plug zero in, we couldn't plug one in, we couldn't plug negative one in, and you know, numbers like that. But look at this, we could plug in numbers larger than two, because if we take numbers larger than two and square it, we're gonna get a number here bigger than four, so that would be positive, that would, you know, that would work. And then, let's see, we could actually plug in numbers that are smaller than negative two, because if we take those numbers and square them, we're gonna get something larger than positive four, so we would be taking the log of a positive number, so we're good there. But we can't take the log of anything in here between negative two and two. What's gonna happen is you're gonna have vertical asymptotes here, okay? All right, so what's going to happen here? Well, the graph is going to look something like this. And then over here, it's going to look, it's going to do the same thing. Okay, These are just mirror images of each other. I know it doesn't look like it, but they are. Okay, so... If we just going by the graph here, after you sketch the graph, uh, well, we're coming into two from the right hand side, right? So as we're coming into two from the right hand side, what's the function doing? It's going to negative infinity. And so we can say this limit is negative infinity. It doesn't exist, okay? so. One tip I would give you when you're, you know, doing the limits and everything is have a good idea 
of what the graph looks like. No, know how to sketch these graphs. I mean, this graph here that I drew, it's not exact. It's not perfect, but it gives me a good idea of what that function's doing around the numbers that I want it to, that, you know, that I'm looking at. In this case, 2. I could do the same thing with negative 2. Take the limit as x approaches negative 2 and come in from the left. Well, that's going to what? Negative infinity. You see that? So I hope the video helped. Uh, check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.